started. Welcome, everybody. My name is Daryl Moore. I'm your teacher this month, and I'm so happy that you're here. I'm, uh, I want to welcome you to Full Sail. I want to welcome you to the class. I just want to welcome you in general. Uh, this meeting is to just get you oriented, to take all the mystery out of this class. I know you guys start with a lot of enthusiasm. You also start with a lot of anxiety. You don't quite know what's going on. So what we're going to do today is just take all the mystery out of it. We're going to tell you what's happening, uh, what we expect. We'll, we'll go through the assignments. We'll go through, um, you know, uh, the reading a bit. And we'll just uh, talk it all out. And I'll answer as many questions as you like. Um, so uh, th these live sessions are being recorded. Uh, it's, not ab it's not mandatory that you attend live. It's, it's, it's helpful. If you attend live, you get to participate. You get to ask questions. If you can't attend live, then we record it. We're recording it now. And uh, the recording will be made available throughout the week. So anybody who can't attend live can watch the recording, and that's as good. So we, watch, we, we, we ask everybody to either attend live or watch the recording. You don't have to do both. You don't have to, uh, uh, you know, change your schedule. Uh, we made, the, we made the, uh, the times arbitrary you know, and so we know we can't fit everybody's schedule. And there's always people who want to attend live and can't, and I understand that, but uh, watching the recording should get you what you need. Um, so online education is uh, a tough thing. It's, it's a mysterious thing. I think a lot of you have, have tried other places. I think Full Sail's got the, the format down. But one of the things about you know, uh, online education in this sort of trepidatious time is that you're all in your environment. So you don't have to wear masks if you don't want to. You don't have to interact with people you don't want to, but you, you can have uh, interactions if you like. Now, another great thing about being online is that you're on your own. You can do whatever you want. So you can wear masks if you want to. That's the thing you're into. Uh, you can be yourself. And we want everyone to feel comfortable to be themselves. We want you to make this experience your own. So everybody has to sort of do a little bit of customizing this, uh, the, the, the setup to make it what you want it to be. And we're going to be trying to be as flexible as possible to make that happen. Now, the, the software we're using is called Zoom. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it, especially, you know, since the virus took over and everybody has to stay at home now. People are using Zoom for lots of things. We've been using uh, Zoom for online education for a while. And uh, we find it works pretty well. Uh, we're not going to go heavy on the video here. We're going to, uh, the format we're going to use is I'm going to show you my desktop. Uh, we'll start off with slides, but I'll eventually break out of that and just show you uh, the FSO platform in my browser. And you'll see my desktop live as I work through things and, and, and do stuff that you could do at home. And you'll hear my voice. And I could be on camera. Uh, in fact, uh, I will I will be a, a minch and uh, turn my camera on right now so you can see me. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a real person. I'm here, but uh, there's really no uh, advantage to that, and uh, it, it, it tends to just be a, a hole in the recording. So uh, to get a good recording, I, I just usually turn off my video. You you guys can have your video on or off if you don't, uh, whether you, uh, however you like. And uh, I'm controlling the microphones as well on my end. So if you want to speak, all you have to do is, is call for my attention and I can, I can call on people and unmute people. So we're going to be interactive in that way. Um, I like to just loosen it all up by uh, unmuting everybody. Let's see, is, is it possible? Uh, mute all. So I don't have an unmute all. Oh, well, usually let everybody yell and scream, but uh, it's not necessary. Uh, I know you guys are here, and we're gonna we're gonna hear from you guys in just a second. So this software allows us to get together, allows us to ask questions. There's a chat box, so anybody who doesn't want to speak out loud or um, be on camera can answer or ask questions uh, in the chat box as well. So uh, there are a number of features here that allow us to be somewhat interactive, but. Mostly this is just going to be an online lecture where I'm talking you through and uh, the most valuable part will be at the end when I dump out of the slides and just uh, go to the FSO platform on my browser and uh, we, we, we do things, uh, the same thing that you can be doing on your own systems. Uh, so 
as I said before, my name's Daryl Moore. I've been at Full Sail for about a dozen years now. Um, I'm an old guy, I'm actual gray beard. Uh, I've been in the uh, film and television industry for about 30, 35 years. Um, I produced, I wrote books on film. I produced uh, videos for the videotape store uh, rentals and so forth. And I did early uh, um, video uh, education in the 90s before I got called to full sale. So I did a lot of different things. But I've been working with computers for a really long time. It started with uh, Mac computers in 1984, and I've always been using them as a, um, a way to get video and video effects into uh, my, my productions for low cost. So um, once I became pretty good at that, I started teaching it as well. In uh, the 90s, I started teaching um, After Effects, uh, before it was actually after, called After Effects and so forth, uh, and uh, getting involved in a lot of uh, high-end uh, multimedia and so forth. And uh, around 2005, uh, I got a call from Full Sail to come down here and join their team. And I've been teaching digital video for about a dozen, a decade. And two or three years ago, I moved over to this team, the creative presentation team. And uh, it's really a, a continuation of what I've been doing before, which is basically telling people how to tell stories through multimedia, and that's what this class is about. This is an oral communications class, but we're gonna to learn to express ourselves and express ourselves with media. I think this is a pretty savvy group. I think you all use computers daily uh, and uh, adding pictures, sound, and video to what you have to say is just um, a natural extension. So this is not an advanced class. We're not gonna be teaching people uh, any complicated software, it's a, it's a class about learning how to express yourself, to speak out loud, to, to get your opinion across, to make a presentation uh, in a, a timely fashion that, that, that can gather people's attention and give you the skills to make more presentations on, on your future classes at Full Sail. Because mostly that's the kind of assignment you're going to be doing uh, as homework rather than writing papers in a lot of the classes that you're going to be doing you're going to be actually creating link media so this is a, a chance to get started with that um, I really like helping students I really like answering questions and being available so I try to make myself available as much as possible I'm giving my cell phone number here because I know that uh, while you can ask me questions on the FSO platform and you can send me email and those are find ways to do things. Sometimes you want an answer real quick. Uh, and so I'm happy with you to text me. I have my phone with me at all times. So if you text me a question, you're gonna get an answer back almost immediately. Now, I'm not an ATM machine, I'm not always gonna be around. Uh, but for the most part, if you want a, a quick answer and you wanna have a real conversation, we can do that. If the, um, the answer becomes too complicated to do in text, I may, uh, May actually use the phone feature of my phone uh, imagine that and give you a call but for the most part um, I'm just here to answer questions and uh, uh, help you along the way uh, I don't want to I don't want to take too much of your time I don't want to be in your way if you can be working on your own this class is a precursor to the other full sale classes full sale teaches a, a method we call um, uh, project-based learning, meaning that rather than just uh, take a lot of tests and do a lot of academic stuff, we give you actual projects to do and you learn by doing. And uh, we find that that's much more uh, conducive to the kind of creative people that we're teaching. And so our method of teaching is not to give you the answers, but to give you the problem and help you find the solution yourself. So I'm going to be kind of a coach. I'm not going to be, a, you know, the orator. I don't have the exact answer. I, I can give you examples. I'm going to be very helpful in giving examples of how other students solve some of these problems. But most of these problems that I'm going to give you are problems that you set up yourselves. They're, you're, you're going to customize them. So uh, you, you're the one that's going to create your own um, uh, issues to be resolved. Uh, and I'll explain that as we go along. But... Um, you know, I want to be available and uh, just don't feel like you're ever bothering me to ask a question because 
that's what I'm here for and I really want to be helpful. So now I want to try to find out who you guys are. We're going to uh, just uh, turn the tables right now and I'm going to uh, have, I'm going to go down the roll here. There's uh, quite a few people here, so I don't know if I want to get everybody, but I'll, uh, I'll pick and choose. And anybody that I miss, uh, I'll, I'll give you an answer, uh, a chance to, to uh, come in at the, at the end. Uh, so uh, I, nobody's going to get skipped over. But when I call on you, I'm going to ask you to answer four questions. You've got 15 seconds. And uh, it's a pop quiz, but it, it's not a hard pop quiz. Here are the questions ahead of time. Just so when I call on you, I want you to tell me your name, tell me where you're from, because we have students from all over the country and maybe all over the world here, and what you're here to study, because this class has combined all the degree programs. This is the first class that everybody who goes to Full Sail takes, and therefore, uh, you are in a mix of people who are here to study game design and cinematography and audio production and uh, sports casting and... Uh, uh, gra graphic design and creative writing, the full gamut, web design. So I want you to tell me what you're here to study. And then finally, I want you to give me two words to describe your professional vision. So, you know, think about who you are and describe yourself with two words. They don't have to be the same phrase. It can be two different words. But, uh, you know, think about that as I call on people. And right now I'm going to call on uh, Alondra Lozo. Loza. Loza. Okay. Um, my name is Alondra Loza. I'm from California. I'm going to study for computer animation, and two words to describe my professional vision will be geek and fun. Hey, that was excellent. Thank you. And I'm going to mute people. I'm going to mess up people's names, but I uh, apologize ahead of time. Andrew Tamburu. <laughs> I can even make sure, I can make sure that Roby picks up early and delivers him early. Andrew, I can't hear you. I mean, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I place the, the Roby super early and I, and I set. All right, we're going to move on. Uh, Ariana W. Hello, my name is Ariana. Um, I'm here to study music production and two words that would prescribe my professional vision would be change and optimism. And where do you live? I live in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, all right, thank you. Brandon Tarb Tarbwillen. And I'm from Northwest Arkansas, and I'm uh, audio production student. And two words I describe my professional vision is change and growth. Change and growth. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Chelsea Blackwell. Hi. Hi. I'm, my name is Chelsea Blackwell. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I'm studying creative writing. And two words to describe my professional vision, global perspective. Sorry, I got out of place there. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. OK, cool. That was my fault. Um, let's see. Just a minute. There we are. Uh, Kevin Sullivan. Yep. Uh, my name is Kevin Sullivan. I am from Fergus Falls, Minnesota. I am studying game design, and my two words to describe my professional vision would be financial freedom. Excellent. We all want that. Um, Lakia. A lot of first names here. Lakey, are you there? Well, 
Well, we'll move on. Uh, if you're having a problem, you can also type in the chat box. Um, Cody Austin. Hello, my name is Cody Austin. I am from South Carolina. Uh, I am in the in here studying creative writing and two words that describe my professional vision would be um, passion and ambition. Excellent, great words. We have a lot of passion here. Um, Naraya. Hey everyone, my name is Naraya, they call me British. I'm from London, I live in Fort Lauderdale. I'm studying audio production um, two words, motivation and passionate. There you go. Thanks. Uh, Lynn Marie. Hi. Hi, my name is Lynn. I'm from Bronx, New York. And two words to describe me, I guess, like my goal would be heartfelt connections. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Vim de Borger. Excellent name. Vim, are you there? Well, we'll move on from there. Not, not so successful today. Uh, try one more, Zachary Anderson. Hey, sorry about that. Um, my name is Zach. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm studying digital marketing and uh, two words to describe my professional vision will be tenaciously creative. Tenaciously creative. Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody else wants to do it that I skipped you, uh, put your name, uh, write your name in the chat box and I'll call on you. I guess everybody's satisfied. Oh, here we go. Andrew Timber Tamburino. All right, we tried this earlier. Let's, let's hope it works. Hey, yeah, I was actually, uh, I was away from my computer. Uh, yeah, so my name is Andrew Tamburino. I am actually from New Jersey, but now living in Georgia. I am studying web design and development. And my two words would, I mean, it's, it's just hardworking and structured. Hardworking and structured. There you go. Hopefully we'll provide both. Ryan Avant. Thanks, Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's uh, Ryan Avant. I'm from uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm studying uh, digital cinematography. Uh, two words that would describe my professional vision would be uh, tactful and uh, bring about change or change. There you go. Nice to have some tactful people here. That's always good. Uh, Mel. Hi, fellow audio production majors. My name is Mel Fabiano. I'm from Hampton Bays, New York. Um, I strive for musical excellence. All right, and you, the audio quality was excellent. Thank you. And finally, Rhea. Hi, I'm Rhea. Um, I am studying digital cinematography. Two words that describe me, describe what I'm going to, well, my vision is financial independence. There you go. All right. Thanks, everybody. That was, that was really helpful. I like to get to know you guys. 
So what do we expect from you guys? It's a month one class. Um, are we expecting you to be fully formed, uh, advanced multimedia artists? No, uh, we know you guys come from a lot of different backgrounds. Now, one of the things that we do expect that, uh, just because of the times is that um, you're as sophisticated as, as everybody else. We live in an agent, we live in a time where everybody has this amazing computer in their pocket called a smartphone that is capable of, of shooting video and taking pictures and recording sound. And, and uh, you guys, uh, just for fun, are, are, are posting all kinds of pictures to Instagram or video to YouTube and, and so on and so forth. So we know you have those abilities. And so we're going to ask you this week, this month, to make multimedia. But we're not going to ask you to use any programs that you're not familiar with, and we're especially not going to uh, uh, ask you to um, uh, use any programs that you're not familiar with or that, that take too much time. Now, we're going to show you some new programs that you've never used before, but for the most part, they're going to be the kind of programs that you can pick up very quickly and use to express your ideas. What we want you to do this month is to create multi multimedia and tell stories and show us your ideas. Uh, but we don't need you to um, work at a level above your skill level. Now, some of you are coming in with some pretty advanced skills. You already took Photoshop and Maya and Final Cut Pro in high school or whatever. Some of you have been working in the industry. So I want you to work to the full extent of your abilities. If you're familiar with advanced audio programs, go ahead and use those. If you're familiar with video editing programs, you're, you're free to use those, but no one is required to. So uh, the only thing that's gonna be uh, a hamper on you is if your ambition for your project is beyond your skill level, I'm gonna ask you to scale it back to what you can actually do. But um, the, the things that we're gonna ask you to do are going to be uh, um, basically about um, your, your thoughts, your, your, uh, your expressions, your ability to tell stories. These are all things that I think uh, are, should be in your wheelhouse. And I know that nobody likes public speaking, but we're gonna work on it as part of uh, making ourselves uh, better communicators, better presenters of, of multimedia and so forth. So we expect you to be open-ended and, and try what we ask, and, um, and we expect you to ask questions. If you're not understanding the reading, if you're not able to figure out how to make a certain program work, let us know. There's going to be lots of help. We've got great technical help support department. Our technical help is basically to make your gear work. Uh, one of the things that we, we, we do at this school, we began uh, a long time ago with our uh, LaunchBox program. Everybody on day one got a LaunchBox, and that's actually what happens when you come to campus. When you come to campus, you've already made a huge commitment. You've moved to Florida, <laughs> you're renting an apartment, you're not going anywhere, so we felt like we could trust you. But uh, what happened in, in the online uh, area is that uh, in the first month or two, uh, if we sent out $3,000 laptops to a lot of people, a lot of them ended up on eBay. So uh, we had to scale our program back, uh, not really to our designs, but uh, the federal government's designs that Students have to prove that they're serious students before we you know, put some heavy hardware in your hands. So you all have to use your own gear for the first three or four months of these classes. And these classes, first three or four classes are designed so that you do not have to have uh, you know, um, a launch box uh, advanced computer to fulfill the assignments. You can do it on whatever media you're working on. So some of you, if you don't even have a computer, you're working on your phone, this class is designed to work on that way. If you have a computer, it's much, much better. Um, it, it's just a simple fact that making multimedia is easier on a computer than on a phone. On uh, a phone, it's designed to do media in certain streams, but in being a creative artist, what you have to do is you have to mix and match different programs. You have to do uh, images over here and then move them over somewhere else and do audio and, and whatnot. And that kind of um, uh, multitasking isn't as common on a phone. Uh, a lot of you are very capable on your phones and you're going to do great work on your phone. So I don't have to worry about that. But if you're 
Um, not as fluent in multimedia as you would like to be. You're going to be better off working on a computer than you are on a phone. Or uh, And in between there is the tablet. Uh, um, iPads are am amazing tools for creating multimedia. So they're purpose built for these things. So um, if you have the, this gear, we'll help you to work it better. Our tech support the problem uh, will will help you uh, with problems with connecting to FSO, understanding uh, problems with our system, and making sure your gear works. But if you're having trouble understanding the courseware, you need to come to me. Uh, the tech support department really isn't going to talk about the class, but we're all here to make sure that you're moving forward. And we need you to ask questions, to step forward, and tell us that you need help because uh, it, with these remote locations, we can't always be checking on everybody all the time. We do the best we can, but really in an online situation, if you want help, you need to ask for it and you'll find that it's there. Now, what should you expect from me? Well, you should expect me to be available. I'm your teacher. You're paying my salary. I'm here for you. Don't ever feel like you're bothering me. Don't apologize for asking questions. I love to answer questions. Uh, it's my favorite thing. So ask me as many questions as you like. Um, I try to be as available in as many media as I can. So I'm always checking the, the, the website. If you leave messages for me there, I'll answer them. I'm checking my email. If you send me email, I'll check it. I've got my phone with me. So if you call or send me text, I'll answer that immediately. And I'm usually checking the Discord um, uh, chat channel. And that's just uh, something that we set up because so many people are gamers and your guys are on Discord. All, anyway, we figured if we had a channel there, that would be a way we could pass information back and forth. You could ask a quick question. We can, we can post files and sort of, uh, that sort of thing. And it's a great way for you guys to get to know each other. One of the things that you should be aware of is that these first three or four months are unique in that this will be the only time in your career that you're going to be with all the other students from Full Sail. That once you get past these first three or four months, you're going to be in your degree program. And if you're studying web design, you're only going to be with web designers. If you're studying game design, you're only going to be with game designers, so on and so forth. And um, it's really a good idea to... Um, to get to know a lot of the other full sale students and to be able to have contacts. You know, if you're a creative writer, then you really want to know audio producers and, and uh, film creatives and, and, and people in the video game industry because networking after school, after you graduate is the way that your career is going to advance. And so a lot of the connections that you make with folks in the other degree patterns in these first three or four months are going to be crucial to you not only in getting through the rest of your school period, but in uh, the times afterwards when you all go into your individual professions. And then as an audio producer, you're suddenly going to need a video game designer. Uh, and and, and uh, hopefully you met some in school. So this is a great time to get to know each other uh, and especially uh, build friendships beyond your specific degree program. Now, I know most of you are really honed in on your degree program and you only you're a video game designer, you only want to talk to video game designers. Believe me, that'll happen. But right now, it's a great chance to know some audio producers and creative writers and so on and so forth. Um, you should also expect me to give you timely grading. Uh, these assignments that we give each week are platformed on each other. So you really need to know how you did last week so you can go forward. And uh, I uh, try to grade as fast as possible. So. I will be getting your grades back to you on Mondays and Tuesdays so that at the beginning of the week, you know how you did and you can go forward. Uh, professionalism, as you guys were clicking through the introductory stuff today, you probably came across this. Um, you probably didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it, but I've got to say that professionalism is something that's built into every single class at Full Sail. And it's our way of turning you into a working creative professional. Um, we're not just here to teach you software. We're not just here to, uh, you know, uh, give you a knowledge of color or, uh, or lighting. We want to turn you into a working creative professional. 
And to that end, uh, we're going to give you help in making resumes and help in, in, in interviewing people and in networking. And we're going to turn you into a working professional. And part of the way we do that is that we treat each other like we're working professionals as we go through school. So I want all, each of you to treat your, your fellow students as creative colleagues and treat them with respect, treat them with uh, courtesy. Uh, I want everybody to have great attitudes. I want everybody to show up on time. I want you to meet deadlines. You know, deadlines are very important at Full Sail. Now, this is the very first month. Uh, I know you've heard that this is an accelerated education. You don't yet know what that means, but it is intense. And so this month, is not as intense. This month is kind of like an on-ramp to the way classes are gonna go, but uh, four weeks is not a lot of time and uh, we cram a lot of stuff into it. And so you've got to have that rhythm in your body to be able to do it. And it takes a while to, to develop that. Uh, they say it takes six or eight weeks to develop a habit. And our class is only four weeks long. So it's like, it's definitely gonna be more than the first month of classes before you get your study habits down. Some of you are coming back to school from a long time. Some of you are coming from different situations and online learning is tough. You're on your own. You have to be your own disciplinarian. You have to be uh, the, the person who, who keeps yourself to schedules. So time management is, is going to be a hard thing and carving out a space in your life that you can protect for your studies is very important. Life is going to impinge on you, you know. Uh, you're going to break your collarbone and have to go to the hospital. Your kids are going to get sick. You're going to, your boss is going to ask you to work overtime or, or an extra day or, or whatnot. Army's going to, you know, put you out on maneuvers. So the life you're leading is going to attack your schedule, and you have to protect your study time against that. And it's going to take a while before you get that put together. But it's important that you work that out. And that's part of becoming a working professional. Uh, the kind of people that once you're graduated, everybody else wants to hire are the people who show up early, the people who never miss a deadline, the people who are always friendly, that help each other, that volunteer to do things. And that's what professionalism is all about. So the way it works at Full Sail is that it's 10% of your grade for every single class. And at the beginning of the month, you get the full 100%. You start off with perfect record. And if there are any behavioral infractions, any instances of, in, uh, of, of lack of professionalism, then that starts to tack off that score. And this first month, it really, it, it hardly affects anybody. Everybody is so excited. Everybody is so friendly that uh, it, uh, it doesn't present itself. But school goes on a long time. Once you've been here, you know, 15 months, you might start to get crabby. And uh, if you're snapping at other students or you're being less than professional, you know, that's gonna show up on your score. So that's gonna be something that kind of keeps you in line just the same way a paycheck keeps you in line at a real job. And uh, it is a helpful way of making you into a working professional. So I don't need to say much more about it except that it's gonna be part of you, every single class that you have. So, our class is based on uh, two books, and the reading in these books is going to form the basis of the information that we deal with and the assignments that we create. And uh, the books come from a service called Safari Books. So it's important that everybody makes sure that you are able to access Safari Books. Safari Books is a third party site that Full Sail has made a uh, deal with. They, uh, they specialize in um, um, books about media arts. They have a library of over 100,000 books, and it's nothing but books about photography and uh, 3D modeling and animation and video game design and video game programming and web programming and, and, and the, these sorts of things. Um, and so, you have access to every single book in their library through the license that's, that Full Sail has set up. And all of the textbooks that you're going to get from all your classes here are going to come from that. 
Um, this is great service. Um, one of the problems we've had is the, the books that we have assigned are not as freely available on the, uh, the O'Reilly website as, our, uh, as uh, the rest of the stuff. Uh, you're going to find that O'Reilly is actually a pretty good place to read books, but you're going to find that the books that we have assigned, um, Resonate and Cytology, um, are, can only be read online, which is kind of a drag, but we're going to make sure that you have a, a access to the books and, and that we can make that as available as possible. Um, there is a website or there is a, a mobile app for O'Reilly books, but it does not work with the books that we ask you to use. So you're going to have to use your web browser. Even if you're on your phone, you're going to have to use the web browser in your phone to access the site. Uh, it's kind of a drag and we're going to work around it as best we can, but these books are worth reading. Uh, what is Resonate and, and Sciology? There are two books written by a woman named Nancy Duarte. Nancy Duarte is an art director, and she uh, is a freelance director that would go to a lot of different meetings. She would take business meetings. She'd be in other people's meetings. Uh, and uh, just like every other working creative professional, every time she was in a meeting, somebody would break out PowerPoint and run, run, use PowerPoint to run the meeting. Now, this just became something that people started doing in the 90s and continued and it continues to this day. If you go to a meeting, someone's going to run that meeting using PowerPoint. It's become a pattern. But what Nancy Duarte couldn't figure out is that she was meeting with other graphic design artists, other creative artists and professionals, and they were all creating these awful PowerPoints. And she just wondered, why do people just use such bad art and, and have such awful PowerPoints? So she thought that it was because they didn't know how to make proper slides. So the first book she created was called Slideology. And it's more or less a graphic design book about what makes the best slides for a presentation. And she's got a particular theory about that. I'm gonna talk about that in a, in a moment or two. But when she put out Slideology, it was a huge success. And she soon realized that there was a real thirst for figuring out how to make these presentations work. And that while she'd done a really good book, she hadn't really told the complete story. She, she'd only got to the back end. She'd only talked about the slides. And that she needed to talk about the entire process of making a creative presentation. So she wrote Resonate, the second book. But it's the first book you should read because it's the book that talks about what is a presentation, what should she be doing, uh, what goes into it, and what is the process, so forth. And um, those are the main chapters we're going to be reading this week. We want you to get the reading done. It's chapters one, two, three, four, and seven in Resonate. And they're going to sort of set you up with Nancy Duarte's theories about what makes a good presentation. And uh, I'll give you the secret right now. It's, it's, it isn't some, uh, you know, locked away secret like uh, the formula Coca-Cola. Uh, the problem with that there are so many bad PowerPoints out there is that people think PowerPoint is a software that makes a presentation from beginning to end. And that is not true. Pre PowerPoint is a slide making presentation. And what you've got to understand is that you have to figure out a number of things and you have to accomplish a number of things on your presentation before you ever start making slides. Don't make slides first and don't start in PowerPoint. That's the true screw up that everybody makes. That's why PowerPoint that, that are dull are dull, is that people open up PowerPoint. Uh, what happens when you get assigned to do a presentation? And we're gonna end up using this term PowerPoint uh, as if we mean presentation back and forth. I want you guys to make a distinction. PowerPoint is a software by Microsoft that makes slides, digital slides. A creative presentation is a presentation that can contain slides, but can contain any other things. Uh, presentation could be all video. Uh, so there's a wide gamut of what things can be in a presentation. 
but we have come, like we use the word Kleenex to mean tissue, we've come to use the term PowerPoint to mean all presentations. And I'm not gonna be able to get away from it, so I'm just laying it out there right, right in the front that, um, you know, there's this duality. So what happens when you use PowerPoint? Some, someone says, hey, I need you to do a presentation. And the first thing you do is you go and you open up PowerPoint. And when you open up PowerPoint, there's this sub menu that says, choose a template and you pick a, a style and maybe it has some colors and certain types of fonts on it and whatever. And once you've made that choice, then it throws you into slide one and you're just looking at slide one and, and you're looking at this program and it says, feed me. And you haven't ever thought about what you're gonna say or what your presentation is or who you're talking to or why you're doing it. And suddenly you're supposed to be filling in these slides. And because the program is asking you to do it, almost like uh, you're its slave, you just follow what the program does. Now, that's what the program should do. And the issue is you should never open PowerPoint until you figured out all this other stuff. PowerPoint is the last phase of making the presentation. It should be the last thing you open up after you've done everything else, you've completely written your script and you know what you're gonna say. Maybe you even recorded all your audio. Um, so uh, instead of being the dog, PowerPoint should be the tail. Don't start PowerPoint first. That's the big secret. So uh, what Nancy did, and she wrote these books, she just laid out uh, uh, her ideas about what presentations should be, how presenters should present themselves, uh, how you need to think about the process of doing it, what the process is in terms of uh, steps. This is very important. We're going to get to this probably uh, next week about the steps that you go through to make a presentation to follow the proper procedure because if you start out in PowerPoint, you started out at the end and then you know, you've, you've shut off a lot of decisions for yourself. So uh, that is the big, big thing, secret that we're gonna impart to everyone here. Don't start with PowerPoint, use PowerPoint at the end. So uh, she called the book Resonate because it's a sound term. Uh, resonance is about your voice going out and hitting the world. The sound waves come out of your mouth and they bounce against surfaces and they come back. And the sound that you hear when they bounce off surfaces, that's resonance. And that's what she thinks presentations are about. Presentations aren't about what you have to say. Presentations are about what you can, the change you can affect with them, the effect you have on your audience. So there are a lot of aspects to presentations that Nancy's gonna tell us about that are very important for us to understand. Presentations are necessarily very short and quick. You don't pad a presentation to seem uh, you know, smart. You get through a presentation as fast as possible. They're meant to be short and sweet and cut to the bone. They're meant to clarify people's thoughts. In business meetings, you have a presentation, you have a PowerPoint set up at the beginning, and it should only be five or 10 minutes long. And it basically is clarifying the issue. If you're, if you're in a business meeting to discuss a particular problem, then the, pre the, the, the presentation, the PowerPoint that begins that meeting should set up the problem, should set up the issue, should clarify, this is what we're discussing. And then when the presentation's over, everyone is fully armed to have a, uh, an informed discussion about creating a solution. So PowerPoints, presentations are for industries that wanna make quick decisions in a hurry, um, industries that are, that are built on change, industries that move around a lot, creative arts industries. If you're in the video game industry, if you're in the audio industry, if you're in the, the cinema, uh, 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 the movie business, everything you do happens fast. There are a lot of deadlines, there are a lot of things that are moving very quickly, and you need to come to a conclusion among a lot of different creative types very quickly. So these kinds of business meetings are how industry happens these days. In the old days, 40, 50 years ago, if there was a problem, the president of the company might assign the vice president of the company to, 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 to do a study and he'd take six, min, six months and he'd write a 50 page white paper on it and it would get filed somewhere. 
You know, that was their solution. Things move much faster than that nowadays. So we have to think of very quickly, how can we identify the problem and how can we come to a solution? And presentations are the way that we address those issues. And so it's a way of thinking, it's a way of communicating, and you guys all have to have this art. You may think, oh, well, I never need to do presentations in my, my, my business. I'm in the audio production industry. Well, even if you're in the audio production industry, you're going to have to figure out production schedules. You're going to have to figure out album art. You're going to have to figure out logistics, all these kinds of creative problems. And the only way that happens is if you talk to other creative press professionals and you communicate and you connect. And so presentations are about making your ideas clear and precise and the shorter, the better. We don't pad these things. We make them only as long as they need to be to clarify the issues. So we don't want them to be boring. Presentations can be boring. I'm sure you've all been trapped in them and where someone ha has been assigned some presentation and they, they think they have to do X amount of work and they're just talking on and on. And then you can't understand it because the slides don't connect. Everything they say is just a list of stuff and maybe everything they're saying out loud is right there on the screen because they've written the script on the, on, on the slide and now they're just speaking it to you as if you can't read it yourself. Uh, you don't wanna do that. You wanna have slides that help us understand what you're saying. So if you have a narrative that you wanna say out loud, then the slides should amplify that. They should support that. They should not repeat it. They should not be boring. Uh, so we want to be able to create a presentation that connects with people. And we do that by telling stories. Facts alone don't make an engaging presentation. You have to figure out what it is that you need to get across to your audience. And you need to figure out a way to put that into a story that you can tell people. Stories. A good story is the basis of all powerful presentation. We are storytellers. When we're talking to our audience, when we're telling them what we have to, uh, to say, we're telling them stories. We're turning this all into something they can relate to and think about. Why is storytelling more effective than simply reporting? Well, uh, it has to do with uh, you know, how people remember it. And this goes back way, you know, all the way in human history. It goes back 100,000 years. Our literal survival as a species used to depend on whether or not people were listening to important information when they had to be said. And so in order to make those presentations dramatic enough that people would remember them, they would embellish them. They would create stories of them. They would add multimedia. People would gather around a campfire and they would tell us what the dangers were. And you had to make it memorable. So you had to tell it as a story, and then people would remember. Look there. And then people would remember. And this is something that we can actually study scientifically. Your brain is primed for multimedia. So if you just read me facts, there's one or two places of the brain where those information gets stored. But if I have to recall those facts, they don't come back very easily because the places they've stored don't connect. But if I tell you this information in a story with multimedia, with drama, with flair, there are multiple places where this information is stored. And then when I have to remember it back, I can recall it very easily because of the multiple places that it's been stored in my brain. So what do I need to tell a story? Well, you guys all know this. This is not uh, a mystery here. The elements of a story are beginning, middle, and end. It's a format for the way that you tell information. The beginning is laying out the issues. This is not necessarily drama or fiction. This can be anything that you need to say. You know, uh, what, what should we build as the level for 45 for the, for the game that we're working on? Should we order more toilet paper for the office? Any mundane problem that you have to figure out can be turned into a story from beginning, middle, and end. The beginning is laying out 
the way things are right now. What is the, you know, what is the current state of things? The middle are the complications. What are the issues that could or might happen or the changes that could happen? And the end, we often call it the takeaway, is the conclusion that meets through that. So any issue that you have uh, can be put into the form of a story. You lay out the facts at the beginning, you talk about the complications and the, and the options and the changes in the middle, and at the end, you draw a conclusion. You're, you move the audience toward a conclusion or you talk about what the issues are in, uh, that have to be resolved so that you get the audience to the point where at the end of your presentation, they're ready to have an informed discussion about what needs to be done. Um, now, I mentioned that Nancy Duarte has a particular notion of the way slides should be made. You can have uh, anything on a slide. You can have an image by itself. You can have text by itself. She likes a combination of text and image in which they're sort of commenting on each other or helping each other understand uh, things. Now, when she says, quote, this may just be uh, you know, a statement or a subheader or whatnot. It doesn't have to be a literal quote, uh, but uh, sometimes it is. So here's a, here's a literal quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. It's by Socrates. So this is as, this is as raw a piece of text as I can give you. It's black text on a white background. You don't have any way of interpreting this quote other than to read it and think about it. And it is not fully self-evident. I mean, it's an interesting quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. So what are you to think about this? Well, there are a couple of ways you could interpret it. There are a couple of thoughts that you could have towards it. You could key off of um, who said it. Uh, Socrates, you may never have heard of him. Socrates is a famous philosopher that lived 3,000 years ago in ancient Greece. So if you know that it's an ancient Greek quote, then you know that it's some kind of lofty uh, uh, piece of information that's come down through the ages. And if you think about it as educate, inf uh, information that's come through the ages, then you're thinking that it's you know, some, some uh, high lofty thing. But I can combine this quote with artwork that makes you interpret it in other ways. And as a creative artist, I want to make that happen. I want you to interpret the information the way I want you to understand it. I'm only uh, operating with intent if I make sure that you understand the quote the way I mean you to mean it. So perhaps I don't mean it about education through the ages or, or some lofty quote. Maybe I want you to have some sense of urgency about it, about education being really important right now and, and that it's, it's like the most vital thing going on. So if I combine this quote with a photo of uh, kids in the third world on, in under, under an underpass teaching themselves, you suddenly get a sense of urgency about education. This quote, you now interpret this as being education in the modern world, as being something that's happening right now, as something that's being vital, as being a social, current issue. The combination of the image and the text uh, have, have given you a, color a, a coloration on the quote that I intended. And, and this is something that you as a creative artist have to be aware of. This is, these are the, some of the, the decisions you make when you're making a presentation. How am I getting the audience to interpret this information the way I want them to interpret it? And so the choice of image with quote will make that happen. And that's a very creative act. It's something that you're gonna find that's a lot of fun. As you're working in making your presentations, the idea of figuring out how people, how your audience is going to interpret what you're doing is the most important thing that you're working on. And believe me, you have to know who your audience is in order to know how to make them feel a certain way. So what if I didn't want to think about education in the here and now, about education as, a, as an urgent social need? What if I wanted to think about education through the ages? Well, I might key back on, on the quoter, Socrates, 
and I might combine it with a Renaissance painting of Socrates. And now I do have a lofty feeling about it. This does feel like this quote is about education through the ages. The combination of this Renaissance painting focused on Socrates and uh, the layout has made me think differently about what the quote should mean. And the most important thing you need to do is to reach your audience. And the most important uh, tool you have in that is knowing who your audience is. You're designing this presentation and we're never ever designing presentations for everybody, for the entire world. We're always designing presentations for a specific audience. And the more targeted that audience is, the more we know who that audience is, the more we can make a presentation that fits them, that is just exactly who they want. So I know you guys, you guys aren't education professionals. You don't care about Socrates. You don't care about education through the ages. You might not even care about education in the third world. So how can I reach you knowing who you are? modern students in the media saturated world. Well, you know, um, you're not going to know who Socrates is. If you do, my guess is that one way you know who Socrates is, is he is a character in Bill and Ted's excellent adventure in a Keanu Reeves movie in the nineties. And if, if I know that you guys are, are media buffs and that's what you're going to think when I mention Socrates, the character Socrates, and maybe I'll use a clip from that movie and it becomes an in-joke because I know who my audience is. I know who you guys are and I know you're thinking about Keanu Reeves and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So it's about knowing who your audience is and it's about connecting with that audience. If you guys don't know movies at all, then I, this is a bad reference for me. Maybe I should have done something that was all video games. But I have to know who the audience is in order to know how I connect with you. And so uh, my, my, my guess is that you guys probably know who Keanu Reeves is and you, you may or may not have heard of Text Excellent Adventure, but there's Netflix everywhere and, and uh, uh, I think it's worth a gamble. Uh, there are enough people who have seen this movie. But it's all about figuring out what the connection between you and the audience is. What do you have as shared references? What do you have as common areas that you can make in jokes about or that you can make references to or you can make similes about and you have to know who your audience is to be able to do that so what you're in fact doing when you're making this story is you're creating a movie that's going to play in the back of the audience's head this is all about storytelling and if you've heard theories of storytelling you know uh joseph campbell and meeting the hero and the hero's journey and all this other stuff then you thinking that uh, when you stand up and tell your story to the audience, that you're the hero. But the fact is that you're not the hero in this setup, the audience is. And that's the one thing that you really need to get clear in your head. You're the orator, you're, you're telling the story. And if you're telling the story correctly, you're getting everyone in the audience involved, swept up in what you have to say. So it matters the language you use, you have to use active, verbs and you have to use exciting language and you have to get the audience swept up in the story and they all imagine that whatever you're saying is happening to them that they're running a little movie in the back of their head and so every member of the audience is going on a journey as you tell the story whatever it whatever it is you're telling a story about it's happening to them they're imagining that they're the one taking that journey they are the hero of this journey and there's an actual term for the person who take, guides the hero on his journey. And that is mentor. And that is your job. Your job as the storyteller, as the presenter of this presentation, is to get the audience to go on the journey, is to initiate that step, is to get them to move forward. Now, in storytelling, the mentor doesn't necessarily go all the way with the audience. He just gets them started. He gets them out the door. But that is your, that is your job in telling the story and setting up your presentation is to get the audience excited, to get the audience involved in the changes that are going through in the story, the movement from beginning to middle to end, and to get the audience involved. And 
if you can do that, if you can get the audience to get excited and imagine that what you're saying is happening to them, then you will have communicated, then you will have presented your point and your presentation will be successful. And that's what we're gonna learn how to do this month. We're gonna learn how to tell stories so that people feel like they're involved. They feel like it happened to them and they're understanding and caring about it all the way through. And we get to the takeaway and the takeaway, um, the, the actual point that you're getting to, the single point uh, is addressed. So that's what we're working on. That's some of what you're gonna be reading about in Nancy Duarte this week. I need you to get the reading done in the early part of this week so that you have it under your belt as we work on the main assignment. And I wanna talk about the two assignments we have. We have, we have a discussion board that uh, your initial post is gonna be due by Wednesday. And I wanna talk about that first, and then I'm gonna talk about the main assignment, which is called presentation analysis. And uh, let me um, dump out of the, the keynote here and uh, get to my browser. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on a Mac here, and this is my uh, web browser. This is, this is basically the, uh, the, the same interface you guys have. Oh, okay, to the internet. Before I go on, let me ask questions. Are there any questions here? Anybody want to type a question in the chat or, or speak up and ask a question? You guys doing all right? All right. Doing good, Professor. So um, week one, uh, the first, the 1.1 was this, is this lecture. Right? You, you click on here and you're asked to sign up. So that was the link to sign up. Now we're recording this. So about an hour after this lecture ends, I'm going to have this video up on YouTube and I'm going to link it back right here. So if you need to come back, you can come back and watch this throughout the week. And uh, another thing I mentioned, um, you can take notes if, if it's helpful to you, but for most of you, I prefer that you just simply, you know, not, you watch and not take notes. But if you're always wanting to, to refresh something or, or check something again, because we've recorded this, you can come back through the week and, uh, and come back and check things. So um, if, for instance, when I'm going through the homework right now, you want to go back and look at something, you don't even have to watch the entire recording. You can zoom to the end to, go, to where I go through the assignments and so forth. But the, the, uh, the recording will be here on where it says Zoom recordings. It'll be placed there later tonight after the uh, lecture is over. This is where the reading is happening. And you need to be able to click on these buttons and get to the O'Reilly website. If you're not able to get to the O'Reilly website, contact me or tech support and we'll make sure that that's happening for you. But uh, this is where you can read the books. The, we're on the table of contents here and I'm asking you to read chapters one, two, three, four, and seven this week. I know it's a lot of reading, but uh, once we get that down, uh, it's not as intense after that. Uh, and, it, and it is important to set you up as a base for what we're talking about uh, in, in, in the, uh, the 1.4 activity. Now 1.3 is a discussion. This is where you're gonna write what we call an initial post. And uh, if I come in here, you're gonna see that all assignments have full instructions here as downloadable PDFs. So I know this is kind of cryptic language, but uh, this really means uh, creative presentation, uh, presentation history, discussion instructions. And if you, if you download this, this is a PDF, um, now we've created these PDFs for, for computers. And so I realized that on uh, phones, they, they, the horizontal format often isn't great. Hopefully you can turn your phone and, and watch it in landscape format. But um, we're in the process of getting these, these PDFs remade so that they're much more phone friendly. But uh, these are the instructions here. And basically we're asking you to tell us what your you're looking for in this class and what is your history with presentations if you've given presentations before did they go well did they go poorly what's your experience have you used this program or that program what are you looking to learn etc so we have a series of prompts here now we don't ask everyone to answer all these questions these are just ideas for what you could say 
But what we do want is for you to engage and tell us some, something substantial. If it was about the first time you gave a, a, a presentation, tell us that. If you're afraid to speak publicly, tell us that. Uh, if you're interested in software or you've had great experience using one piece of software or another, tell us that. And remember, when we say presentation, we want you to interpret this as broadly as possible. It could be a sales call. It could be speaking at church. It's not necessarily standing up in a business meeting or standing up in school and giving a presentation. Presentations happen everywhere. Um, and so if you've ever given a presentation, if you've ever had an experience, I want you to talk about it. But um, these are ideas for what you could speak to. You don't have to answer every single question. Uh, these are just to help give you some ideas for what you should speak. So as you come to this page, the completion window is a text box that will allow you to put in your initial presentation. If you want to go ahead, before you do that, go to the discussion, you'll see that I've written something and some other people have already started to write something. Once you are seeing what other people are doing, it becomes much easier for you to write what you've put yourself. But when you write in the completion box, then that's an initial post. That's a post that has your name and your icon attached to it at the top, and other people can respond to it. So by Wednesday, we want everyone to make their initial post talking about their experiences. And then by the end of the week, by Sunday, which is the, when the assignment closes, we want everybody to come back and read what everybody else wrote and I want you to respond to two or more classmates. And when we say respond, I want you to respond in a sort of substantial way. Talk to them, engage with them. Don't just say, attaboy, great post. I mean, it's nice to do that. It's nice to exchange pleasantries. But I want you to really you know, talk to them about what they, if they talked about some software and you have experience with it or you have new other software that you might want to recommend, that could be something that you talk about. If they talk about their experience and you had a similar experience, that can be something that you talk to them about. So I want you to engage with your classmates and I want you to respond to at least two classmates. If you respond to more, even better, your grade will be better. But um, you can't respond until everybody's put their stuff in. So that's why we have an early deadline of Wednesday for everyone to get their initial response in. And if you can't make it by Wednesday, Thursday will work. But I, I definitely don't wait till Sunday to put your present your initial post up because no one will have a chance to respond to it. And uh, you can respond uh, to the other posts as, as soon as you like, but I really would ask you to, to, to do this in two stages. Do your post, let some other posts proliferate, and then come back and respond so that you're seeing more than one or two posts or just the first two. You know, uh, one of the things that happens with these discussions is the first two or three posts have 17 replies and, and the last 10 had no replies and it's much better if we even it out and everybody has a little more uh, fuller experience and you can do that just by coming back later in the week. Saturday, Sunday is a good time to do your responses because then all the material is up. But uh, you know this is just a written uh, discussion talking about you know, what your feelings are and uh, um, it's a good way to get to, to know everybody and it's a good way to let us know what you're looking for in this class. I can use that sometimes as a, a guide to let, uh, to know, you know, uh, how to give particular people um, specific information. But then the main assignment this week, this is the, the main thing we're doing. 1.4 is called professional presentation analysis. And this is where we're going to look at a bunch of really great pre presentations and we're gonna, we're gonna uh, figure out what they did right, and what they did wrong. So I hope everybody knows what TED Talks is. If you don't, TED, T-E-D, stands for Technology, Education, and Design. And it's a company that's been going around the world for the last 15 years, putting on conferences. And instead of having one super speaker who speaks for an hour and a half or two hours, they have uh, 15 or 20 people who speak over the course of two or three days, and they're all making short, creative presentations. Uh, and as a result, they, they videotaped every single one of them. They've been doing them for years, and now they have over 3,400 that have been presented worldwide somewhere 
in the last you know 15 years or so. And every single one of these is 20 minutes or less. Like I said, a good creative presentation is short and to the point. So uh, these are between six minutes and 20 minutes long. That means you can get through a lot of them. We're gonna ask you to go through as many as you can. So I want you to really do a deep, deep dive. You know, don't be the guy who just does the minimum. Uh, you're gonna speak on three of them. So that, in order to speak on three, I want you to watch eight or 10. This is, this is a great way to, to lose an afternoon because every one of these things you watch is gonna make you smarter and it's more fun. And um, don't even try to be exactly on your own topic. I mean, you can search here for you know, specific uh, topics on music or video games or creative writing, whatever it is your particular field of interest is, but I'm really wanting you to get outside your box in this case and just look for strange, strange titles, anything that uh, can help you be smarter. Can you solve the Ragnarok riddle? Uh, you know, there, uh, there's lots of stuff on dinosaurs here. There's lots of stuff about mental health. There's, uh, you know, just really great information. Uh, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of stuff about women's points of views. So there are great uh, presentations to be found and just tripped across. At 3,400, I couldn't even begin to tell you what they all are. But there's some really, uh, there's some that are really popular that are, that are highly well known. But I'm hoping that you're going to spend some time, you're going to find some really cool ones. So if we come into the assignment here and download the instructions, we're gonna see that what we're asking you to do is research and watch a minimum of three different TED Talks to answer the question, what makes a presentation creative, captivating, or inspiring? You can choose any TED Talk you want, paying special attention to how the message is crafted and communicated. So you're gonna pick three of the TED Talks that you watched and you're gonna tell me how the presenters did their job. So I don't want you to review the TED Talk. I don't want you to review the topic that the presenter spoke on. I want you to look at the presenter and I want you to tell me how well did the presenter do his or her job? And what is the basis for you having those opinions? Well, if you've done the reading, if you read chapters one through four and seven of Resonate before you start this, then you'll be fully informed of the opinions of Nancy Duarte. And you're to use sort of those opinions as your own to answer these questions. What makes the presentation powerful? What do they do to relate to the audience? What are the tips and, and tricks? And, and, and you know, um, you don't have to like every single one. If you found a presentation that you didn't like, that's even more interesting. You know, write a review of that and tell me what they did wrong. Uh, but basically, I want you to look at presentation and identify the performer. I want, I want you to identify the performer by name, inter, interview, uh, uh, tell me the presentation by title. I like to have both of those bits of information in there. You don't have to go at length on the topic, but you have to tell those things. And then I want you to tell me how the presenter did his or her job. These are all videos. You can watch them on the TED Talk site. And you're going to write two or three paragraphs on each presenter. So you're gonna write three reviews. So if we come back here, create a document for this assignment and include supporting visual imagery. Using the questions outlined in step one as a guide. Now you're not answering these Q and A. Again, you're just using them as prompts. I want you to write a two paragraph review. I want it to be an organic review. I don't want it to be just answering Q&A. I want you to just use these as prompts and then write your own organic review of how what they did right, what they did wrong. Specifically, I want you to address how they addressed the audience, what, what did they do, uh, you know, how, how did the performer do his or her job and, and, and what did they do to make it successful? And you'll notice that this is a document. You're not creating a presentation. We're not doing presentation this week. This is a paper that you're writing. I want you to write a, a text document uh, with your review in it. And I want you to include visual imagery. So once you've written your review, I want you to add some images. I want you to add some pictures to it. And the pictures are there to help me understand what you've written. 
It's like illustrations in an article. It's like slides in a presentation. In a presentation, the body of text is what the speaker has to say. And the slides are there to help us understand what the speaker has to say. They amplify and clarify the content. And so I want you to do the same thing with visual imagery. I want you to pick images that help me to understand what you've written. And I want you to put them in the document. So um, to that extent, you've all been given a copy of Office 365. You were gifted with this copy uh, so that you have access to Outlook for your email. But uh, this is something not necessarily that, that Full Sail does, but that Microsoft does for students. It's a really terrific deal. Every student that has a legitimate .edu student email address is given a four-year license to the latest copy of Office 365 by Microsoft. This is a Microsoft initiative towards education. So you have the latest, greatest version of Office 365. You have a free four-year license for it. And it's even better for full sale students because you're gonna get through school in quicker than four years. And so if you get through school in 30 months, you've got another 18 months um, uh, of use of that full sale uh, Office 365 license uh, because of, of um, Microsoft's um, rules. And you can put it up on the two devices. So you can download Office 365 and you can put it locally on your, on your laptop, on a Mac or a PC, or you can put it on your Android or iOS device. It's available for all four. Now, you need to know that while Office 365 includes Outlook and includes Word and it includes PowerPoint, it's very important that it includes PowerPoint. You're all given a latest copy of the latest version of PowerPoint. But that PowerPoint on Android and iOS isn't necessarily as full featured. It usually doesn't include sound. So um, if you're going to use the PowerPoint on uh, the phone, know that you're gonna to have to do a little bit of extra work with it. But we've included instructions here so that you can put Office 365 on whatever machine it is you're using right now. And specifically, this assignment wants you to use Word. So if I come back to the instructions here, you know, create a document for this assignment, I want you to write two or three paragraphs per uh, TED Talk. And there's three, par three TED Talks. So you're writing three separate reviews. Now, sometimes people like to put them on separate documents. It's okay. But I would prefer if you just put that all in the same document, one long document. And then there's a final step. Conclude your assignment with your own list of 10 qualities, techniques, and presentation skills that made, uh, made it inspiring. Now, this is something that should come directly out of the reading from Nancy uh, Duarte. So... Uh, look to the reading of Nancy Duarte to find the kinds of, of techniques and, and, and uh, uh, qualities that we're looking for there. And, and in this case, you're comparing the three TED Talks to each other. So you're writing three separate reviews, looking at that TED Talk on its own, and then you're going to compare the three and you're going to make this final list, a single list of 10 qualities about what, the, what they shared. And um, I'm going to show you some examples of that as well. So if we look at the TED Talk site, you'll notice that you can play the video right in line. So you can just watch it there. Anywhere you can watch TED Talks is okay. You can watch, you can use TEDx Talks. Some of them um, you can find on YouTube. I highly recommend using this TED.com uh, site. It's uh, very accessible. It's got a lot of great tools for it, uh, whatnot. And when you want to make screen, uh, when you want to make anxiety in early childhood, when you want art to put into your review, you can just do screen captures of uh, the TED Talks. You know, if I want to show you what the uh, um, speaker looked like, you know, here I, uh, on my Mac, I can instantly make screen captures. Uh, if you're on a PC, you can get uh, extensions for your Chrome browser that do the same thing. Uh, you can also make screen captures uh, on a phone and so forth. But uh, that's one way to get art for your presentations. Another way would be Google searches. 
So if you're using art that you you find from other places, we just want you to acknowledge where it came from. You don't have to do a huge job of, of uh, acknowledging or you know citations or anything, but we just want you to say you know if this came from TED.com, you know, acknowledge it just because we're wanting to acknowledge other people's work. So here's an example. I've got a lot of examples from other students, and I'm happy to share these with folks. So this is what an example of 10 qualities would look like. So connection, you know, and, and uh, some information about where in, in knowledge, emotion, ebbs and flows, uh, so on and so forth. So each one of these students has done a good job and I think is an example of uh, something you could use for I should have been better than that. There we go. Uh, now, a lot of students ask me, how many pictures should I have? Well, the answer is that there is no answer to that. Uh, you pick as many pictures as you like. You're not necessarily going to get a, a better grade by having a thousand pictures. When you put a picture in here, I'm going to judge you on does this picture add information and understanding to what you've written? So I don't want you to just grab pictures willy-nilly and throw them in there. I want you to think about the pictures that you put in and tell me, does it help me understand what you've written? Now, certainly when you tell me that the speakers was Genevieve von Petzinger and I see a picture of Genevieve, that's helpful information. I like to have that. Uh, and, and if the story is about fossils and I see a picture of a fossil, then certainly you are helping me understand the article. So, uh, there is no rule for how many pictures you should put in. Uh, you do have to include visual imagery. So include at least one picture. Um, but uh, as much or as little as you feel like to express yourself, but know that I'm looking at the picture you chose and saying, did you choose the right picture to help me understand this? So um, I have a lot of examples here that I'm happy to share and you, you might want to see what other people picked for their uh, um, 10 qualities and so on and so forth. And I'm happy to share all of these examples. What I don't want to do is close off any particular TED talk. So my rule with sharing the examples is that if I give you an example from a previous student, then you cannot use any of the TED talks that are in that particular example. So I'm gonna give everybody different examples so that I'm not closing off any particular TED Talks to everybody. So if you want an example, all you have to do is write me. You can send me a text, you can send me a message on FSO. Um, and remember on FSO, it's as easy. Uh, when you're on any particular page, you can come down to the bottom and leave feedback there. So if you just write, please send me an example right here. Uh, that comes to me, I'm the only one that sees that. Uh, and that's the message between you and me. And I can, I can write back and I can include uh, documents with that. You see how uh, th there are these drag and drop panels here. So if I, uh, um, if I want to uh, attach files, all I have to do is drag and drop to these panels. That's the way you're gonna turn in your homework. Uh, your, your finished homework should probably be a Word document or a PDF. Uh, that'll be the best thing for me. And you just drag it to this completion box and upload it that way. Now, if you're on a phone, then you're probably using uh, your, um, you're probably storing your document on the cloud. It's not an actual file. In that case, you're gonna send me a link to the file rather than the actual file itself. So if you're on a computer, if you're on a Mac or a PC, you upload files. If you're on a, uh, a phone, you send me a link to the cloud document that you wrote, and uh, that's an easy enough way for me to find this out. So anybody wants uh, an example, just sometime during the week, send me a note saying you'd like an example, and I'll send everybody different examples, and that way um, anybody that uh, 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 we're not closing off any of the, any particular TED Talks, but you know, if I send you this example, then you can't use this Tim Hartford one. And that's not that much of a restriction. Like I say, there's 3,400 TED Talks on this website. So there should be plenty of room for everybody. 
Um, questions about the assignment, about uh, uploading or anything? Is it okay for me to do one that I have seen already? Yes. yes. I would prefer you not to, just because oh. widen your horizons. Okay. Now, I, I'm sure people have I see favorite. a lot of them, that's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, if you, if uh, some of these are famous, you know, J.J. Abrams, uh, The Magic Box, and, and uh, 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 William Zander uh, is a music one. Uh, and, and if that's something that's, you know, you've always loved it and you've got plenty to say, yeah, include that among your three. But, yes. uh, you, you know, because you've got so much to say, I want to hear what you have to say. But, you know, uh, don't just do it as a way of not having to watch another TED Talk. I'll just Please add one that, I, that I, Yeah. I will. I will just add one that I, I know and then do All right. the other yeah, two. I, I, I know you're dying to talk about it, so I'm dying to hear. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, anybody else got a question? So I'm going to be around all week. You got more questions. You can come back and ask me again. And again, uh, I've recorded all this. So if some of this information is going, going, and going by very fast, you can come back and review it. Uh, Kevin writes, there are other platforms besides TED Talk. One of my favorites is GDC. It's very similar to TED Talk. We're only going to do TED Talks here. And, but, but I allow you to include TEDx, which is an expansion of that. But there is one restriction on TED Talks, and that is, this is necessarily a review of presenters. So there's a certain class of TED Talk that are like animations that are just narrated, but you don't ever see the performer on, on screen. You can't use those. You have to have an actual performer that you can review in order to use that TED Talk. But um, it needs to be a TED Talk or a TEDx. And um, you know, again, the discussion boards are going to be around on uh, uh, FSO on in Discord. Uh, you guys want to uh, uh, you know work together. Uh, I encourage that. There's lots of information. There are 3,400 freaking uh, uh, TED Talks, so you know you might want to pass information about what's a good one. Uh, you know, it, it is hard to find, but you know that there are also um, tools here for searching. There's playlists, there's uh, search tools, etc. So if you're interested in a particular topic, if you're interested in trying to find something, uh, you know, uh, please spend some time looking at as much TED Talk as you can stand before you start to do turn into the writing, because it's only going to make you smarter, and it's a it's a great opportunity to get a good sense and, and the broad gamut of what these are are going to give you a wider sense of presentations. The, you know, the further you get from thinking that it's just a PowerPoint like you've seen in high school, the better off we are for your basis of understanding what a presentation is because a presentation can be almost anything that is a story that's told through multimedia. Can we do more than three? Um, I don't really want you to. Uh, you're not going to get a better grade if you do more than three, uh, you know, but I want you to do the three right. Um, if, if you have to do four, you know, uh, and, and that's in you, then that's fine. But um, three is what we ask. Uh, but uh, I want everybody to, you know, commit to writing a, a, a good bit about each one. You know, don't give me four lines. Give me a couple of paragraphs. I don't have a word count for you. I don't want to give away a word count, but uh, you know, you should know that two paragraphs constitutes, you know, a certain amount of thought on your part. Uh, any more questions? I'm sure I'm thinking, forgetting something here, but we'll, we have time all week to get to it. So uh, I'll be around and I'll be posting more stuff and giving you more um, uh, examples and, and so forth. So, uh, if, if that's it, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm happy, delighted to meet you all. I think we're going to have a great amount of fun this month. This seems like a really energetic crew. I can already tell that there's going to be some uh, interesting stuff coming out of it. And uh, I think we're going to have a really a good time this month. And you guys are going to start a great adventure here at Full Sail. I'm very proud of the school. I think that you've made the right choice. 
And I think you're all really going to have an amazing adventure here. So welcome to Full Sail, everybody.